Welcome back, everyone. I hope that you explored the applet and you came to some conclusion on your own for each of the two different functions, y equals 1 over the square root of x and y equals 1 over x squared, for how much area you get when you start at 1 and you just keep going off as far as you can imagine off to the right. Both of the graphs look like this. We found formulas for figuring out their areas up to b over here. So let's evaluate it at a few places where the numbers happen to work out pretty cleanly. If I plug in 100, 2 square roots of 100, that's 2 times 10, that's 20, minus 2. So we get 18 units under this graph from 1 to 100. If we plug in 10,000, when I take the square root of 10,000, I get 100. So that's 200 minus 2. So now we've got 198 units of area. So we got a lot more area there. And if we plug in a million, the square root of a million is 1,000. So we get 2 times 1,000 minus 2, which is 1998. So in this case, as b goes to infinity, the area does go to infinity, as you might have guessed. So the shape is infinitely long and has infinite area as well. So probably no surprise there. Most shapes that you can imagine that are infinitely long should have infinite area, right? Certainly if I had drawn, say, x squared and asked how much area it has from 1 to infinity, that would definitely be infinity. But what happened when you did this other function? 1 over x squared qualitatively looks exactly the same as this graph, although it's a little bit lower. What happened when you plugged in there? So when we plug in 100, we get 1 minus 1 over 100, which is 0 0.99. So we knew it would be less area, and it is. But now, when we plug in 10,000, we get 1 minus 1 over 10,000, which is 0 0.9999. Wow. This got a lot of area. This added 180 units of area. This added only 0 0.0099 units of area, almost none. And when we plug in a million, 1, over 1 minus 1 over a million is 0 point, and then there should be six nines. So what does it look like? It looks like, in this case, as b goes off to infinity, as we imagine this shape extending forever off to the right, what happens to the area? As b goes to infinity, in this case, the area just gets closer and closer to one unit. In fact, you can see it will never get above one unit because we're always taking one minus some tiny, tiny, tiny positive value. It keeps getting closer and closer and closer to one, but never quite gets there. So even though the shape is infinitely long, it only has one unit of area. I hope you found that at least a little against your intuition. Here we had a shape that was infinitely long, infinite area. Nothing surprising. Here the shape was infinitely long, one unit of area. To me, that's pretty cool. So one more thing about this. If we take the graph of y equals 1 over x, and you do the same thing, we'll leave it to you to do that, you'll also see that it has infinite area. Now, if we do something that you're going to see a lot more of next semester, where you spin a curve around an axis and you create a three-dimensional shape. So if we spin this 1 over x curve around the x-axis, we get a 3D shape, which originally was called, or should be called, Torricelli's trumpet, because Torricelli was the mathematician physi uh, physicist who investigated this shape. Often nowadays, it's more called Gabriel's horn. This is a reference to the Bible. And when we spin this around, well, we know that it, it, the area just of this much is infinite. You can do it the same way we did there. Therefore, if I take a cross section through the center of this, that's basically twice as much area. That's certainly infinite. And if I tried to find the surface area around this whole thing, the surface area would definitely be infinite. So if you wanted to paint the outside of this, you would need infinitely much paint. What if we try to figure out the volume of this horn or trumpet? So you can imagine when I spin this little thing, if I take a little rectangle and I spin it around here, I get a very, very thin cylinder. This is just a preview for next semester, but it's too cool to resist now. I get a very thin cylinder, and the volume of that little cylinder is pi times the radius squared times the thickness delta x. But when we take the limit, when we do the integral, right, we take the, these rectangles getting closer and closer and closer to zero, 
the delta x we rewrite as dx. Our radius here is just the function, right? The distance from here to here is 1 over x. So pi times 1 over x squared. But we already know this is the same. I can pull the pi out front. And then I've got the limit as b goes to infinity, 1 over b, 1 over x squared dx. That's the integral we just computed there, 1 over x squared from 1 to b as b goes to infinity. Meaning the volume of this is pi. So just to restate this again, the area of a cross section through the center is finite. Therefore, the surface area, which is even more, sorry, the area of a cross section through the center is infinite. Therefore, the surface area around the whole thing must be even more. That's also infinite. If you want to paint the outside of this thing, you've got to buy infinitely much paint. If you turn it on its side and you fill it up with milk, you only need pi units, pi cubic units of milk. It's got a finite volume and an infinite surface area. Finite volume, infinite surface area. That is crazy. Please spend some time pondering that.